the Nebraska situation is fascinating to me right now. Um, even before Bill Moose had, had retired, and by the way, that was in no way, shape, or form a retirement. Um, I, I just wondered what Nebraska was. What's its brand? Does the average 18-year-old think of it? With Scott Frost a few years ago being the hip young coach who had who had the chops, who had the ability, who had the background, and it's just completely fallen on its face. Uh, 12 and 20 in his three years, I think. Um, and going into year four, what does that look like? When I suggested he was on the hot seat last year, well, he just signed an extension. Wait a minute. You know, and even now I have people telling me he just needs time. Well, if you just need that much time in college football uh, these days, that's the school's problem. It's not the coach's problem because you're probably waiting too long. So he has to go to a bowl game at least this year to turn things around. And they don't look like they have the personnel to have it. Now, the guy that hired him, Bill Moose, you know, was was escorted out with a nice three million dollar severance package. You know, you don't. You don't, you don't give somebody, uh, you know, if, if they quit, which is what they're saying he did, he retired, you don't give him $3 million uh, five days later. But so now the new AD, whoever he is, did not hire Scott Frost. And what does that look like? And what kind of pressure is on? I think the first pressure point we'll see on that, I would look very closely to see if the streak ends at Nebraska this year. They did not sell out for the spring game. Um, because of COVID, it was only half capacity, but they didn't fill it. And that would be a huge indicator if they do not have a sellout this year, the way things are going in Nebraska. Dennis, I, I, it's a really interesting one. I, I think Nebraska is more likely than not to make a game, but they're a school that I think will benefit greatly on the recruiting trail from NIL. Yeah. Right. Like there's, they, they have people who want to support the program. I don't know that they always are pedal to the metal with how they do it, you know, currently, you know, as far as the, the bad game stuff. And there's not very many other things to endorse in the state of Nebraska. Right. So like they're where, whereas if you're in Miami, like there's a lot of like or Miami players getting endorsed, but the influencer market in Miami is it's pretty crowded, right? There's a lot of folks who go to Miami or influencers in Nebraska. You kind of could, could really corner that market. I'm interested to see if that job is more attractive now because of the influencer potential. And you saw the biggest news out of Nebraska last week was the Runza deal where mm -hmm. <laughs> it said the first, the first 100 athletes in the, in Nebraska, in the state, not just, University of Nebraska, uh, get a hundred dollars or whatever it was. Does anybody know what a runza is? Oh yes, it's yes. delicious, is what it uh, is, Dennis. Uh, it it is it is uh, a guilty pleasure. But if you had to describe it, people would stick their finger down their throat. It's <laughs> ground beef, cabbage, onions, and what else? Something else and spices on spices, a roll. Yeah. And if you had to describe that to somebody, you go, but it's it's a delicacy in Nebraska. Does it taste like Philly cheesesteak kind of? It's, like, it's, is it that mixture of flavors and combinations? Kind of, yeah. It's kind of like a calzone, but it's a sandwich. Yeah. Like yeah. a shepherd's pie calzone without yeah. the mashed potatoes? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it's, that. It's delicious. That's what it is. <laughs>